Good morning. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on the feast, the memorial of St. Marguerite Bourgeois, very important person in the history of our church in Canada, foundress of the Congregation of Notre Dame. There is no intention this morning, no particular intention this morning for this Mass, and we encourage you to, if you wish, to have an intention uh, celebrated in this Eucharist to contact Salt and Light Television. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of their Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's take a moment to acknowledge our need for God's grace. Let us ask for forgiveness and reconciliation from the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who called Saint Marguerite Bourgeois to leave her homeland so as to educate young people in the Christian life. Direct, we pray, our words and our deeds, that along the varied paths which lead to you, we too, by her example and prayer, may proclaim the loving presence of our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hebrews. God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels. But someone testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels. Now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, 
I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are those who delight in the Lord's commands. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and land. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their power is exalted in honor. Happy are those who delight in the Lord's commands. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've now lived almost a full year with the reality of COVID-19. And recent news from the United States and the violence that has been growing there, and an awareness that the same divisive energies are at work in our country and in our church weighs heavily upon us. It can seem all too much to bear. We can see this in at least some of the responses of people to increased government regulations to try to fight the virus, in impatience and even resistance to those regulations. People want a break from the heaviness. For Christians, this struggle, these difficulties, can also give rise to a longing, to a question. In the midst of all this struggle, all these difficulties, what does salvation look like? For what can we hope? One answer, one that has been given often in the past, 
is that salvation comes after, after our time here. We can hope for rest in heaven. Or as the caricature goes, salvation is pie in the sky when you die. The scriptures today, however, particularly the letter to the Hebrews, which we heard in our first reading, are very clear, and we see it in the gospel as well, that salvation begins here and now in the action of Christ, in the action of the Holy Spirit. And the coming age of salvation, as the author of the letter to the Hebrews says, is not entrusted to angels as if it was going to come fully made from heaven, but rather God has made us participants in our own healing and reconciliation, participants in our own salvation, has given us the grace to labor with Jesus by the Spirit to craft the new life, the new creation that God has brought about in the resurrection. Our participation in this hope, says the letter to the Hebrews, takes the shape of Christ's life, passion, death, and resurrection. Christ, who is the pioneer of our salvation. Christ's way of loving is a total gift of himself for the good of our neighbor without returning violence for violence, but rather overcoming violence with love, even to the cross. This is not simple passivity, but rather choosing to suffer evil and responding with love, rather than harming the neighbor. This is the way that was also pioneered in this country by Marguerite Bourgeois and her sisters. She left the violence of religious wars in France to build something new here. She was animated, as so many others were in the founding of Montreal, by a vision of reconciliation and justice to create a genuine common good. And for her, the image of Mary pilgrimaging to visit Elizabeth, Mary, Our Lady of the Visitation, was the model. Mary, who did not quite know what to expect, who did not have a plan, but who set out, who set out and began to listen to the Spirit, and then who chose in light of that Spirit's call. There were, we have to admit it, limits to that vision particularly a blindness to the true dignity of First Nations peoples. But nevertheless, we can learn from Marguerite to look for the new thing that is being born in the midst of what is dying and falling apart. The creative and reconciling efforts to overcome division, no matter how small, We can learn to see these realities and collaborate with them, following the pattern of love established by Jesus, who overcomes violence with love. Today, through the intercession of Marguerite Bourgeois, may we imitate Mary on her pilgrim journey and follow Christ, who is the pioneer of our salvation.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, our homage and our praise on this memorial of Saint Marguerite, and by this spotless and perfect sacrifice, set our hearts aflame with love in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Marguerite Bourgeois and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i am, I am not worthy that you should, that you should enter, enter under my roof, roof but, but only, only say, say the, the word and my soul shall, shall be healed my jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your life. the two who chose me, it was I who chose you, chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure, so you will receive all you ask the Father in my name. There is no Greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your Let us pray. Nourished to the full by this sacrament of salvation, we implore your favor, O Lord, that by practicing charity after the example of Saint Marguerite, we may come to share with her in your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim the gospel by your living. Thanks be to God.